Hello everyone and welcome to the English Hour. It's been a while. We were absent、It、for、has. a while, and now we're back with a great episode. I hope、um, today we'll talk about multitasking. It's a topic that is very popular, and recently I think a viewer、um, asked me about the importance of multitasking. She specifically asked. The ways I use multitasking,、mm. and in fact, I was a little surprised because I do not talk of anything like that. So, well, today's topic, as I said, is multitasking, and let's、uh, turn the mic over to John Beck. Hello, guys. Well, today we're going to talk about multitasking, and I think we're going to dis- discuss whether multitasking is good or bad, or beneficial or harmful. harmful. And that you know inevitably means we're going to talk about multitasking versus single tasking, and then we had like a very short, very brief discussion beforehand, and as many of guys probably know, Hussein has studied psychology and cognitive science, so he was telling me like multitasking is is a killer, man. You can't really defend that, and I'm like I can't. I know I can't defend it because single tasking, I guess monochronic. Assumption or something like that I don't know. is is better, but at the same time, I'm gonna hold the line for all of you multitaskers out there. So you know, keep calm and well, let's go. I think this will be a balanced discussion because、uh, we're not too aggressive when it comes to our views. So I might have said、exactly. it's a killer, but I don't really mean it. I mean, there are, to my mind, disadvantages of multitasking, which、sure、I will, which I will elaborate on later on, but. There are times、uh, where multitasking can be of help. So,、exactly. and as John Brack said, like we were looking for a topic to discuss, and since some of our last episodes focused on technical topics,、mm. we wanted to take a break and focus on something, talk about something that is、uh, more related to everyday life. And、exactly. I think multitasking is one of those topics because I think. There are ever increasing strains on our time and on our schedule. So in the past, people had a rural life, a simple life, I would say, and they didn't have tens of items or tens of tasks to complete every day. But、mm-hmm. given the circumstances of the modern society, so I'm just giving a background here. Yeah, exactly. So given the circumstances of the modern society and the impacts of industrialization, so. People today are faced with a lot of daily tasks. So, and people are specialized. So, if you work in an office environment like ours,、mm-hmm. there are a lot of day-to-day tasks and operations that you should attend to, and in your personal life as well. So, you go out, you buy groceries, you do stuff, you text your friends, you call your family and friends. There are a lot of strains on our time, and. It becomes ever more important to find a way to manage those responsibilities, and I think most people turn to multitasking when they're faced with such a challenge. What do you think? Well, I have certain sentences, I guess I would call them, in my mind about multitasking that are general in nature and at the same time that look like statements. And we can discuss them. I can, you know,、um, I can throw them around, and I think we can get a better understanding by exploring this topic a little bit further. Yeah. And also, we can help our audience have a more informed appreciation of what this is. By、and、the way, I would encourage all of our listeners to、uh, comment on this topic to share、yeah. their experiences, right? Because mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. we share these episodes on YouTube and on iTunes and on different、um, podcast platforms, so they can easily contribute their opinions and their suggestions, ideas, their revelations, exactly whatever they might have. Well, all of us are either students or professionals, so anybody commenting down there would be doing exactly what we are doing right now. We're talking our, our about our own. Personal experiences, and those guys would be doing the same thing. It would be immensely helpful. So we would definitely encourage you to go ahead and do that. So first of all,、um, what I have in mind about multitasking is it is a little blurry. So it's not very, like it's not set in stone. When you talk about multitasking, you could be talk about 
You could be talking about doing something for a minute and then switching to another task for another minute or that minute could be maybe an hour. You could be focusing on something for an hour and then another thing for an hour, although that would be more aptly characterized as single tasking. Yeah. But still, if the project is extremely long, you switching gears for for an hour would still you know, might still be considered multitasking. For example, that is true, but if you're I would a... have to raise an objection. Okay. I mean, so theoretically, you, have... you can say that. Yeah, theoretically, like you can say that, but you would probably have a better practical definition for that. So the first sentence, first statement in my mind is multitasking is not it's set in stone. It's not very clear cut in terms of how we understand it, because a lot of people seem to be throwing this term around and they might not have the same exact idea when they talk about multitasking. Can so I tell you what I have in mind when I go talk right about multitasking? Yeah. So to me, multitasking means dealing with more than one task at a given time. So what is that given time? Uh, that given time, I would say, is not more than 10 minutes. Mm, I so to me, multitasking is dealing with more than one task mm -hmm. at a very uh, in a very short period of time. So for example, uh, answering an email and then taking a phone call and then mm. writing down some notes or uh, reading a couple paragraphs from a page and then jumping to the next page mm. and writing some notes and so on. So to me, multitasking is uh, working on something for like working on something mm -hmm. uh, in a short period of time and doing more than one thing at that given time period. Mm -hmm. So I see. it's like doing things spontaneously yeah i see so anybody who holds their attention who will hold themselves together for maybe half an hour or to 40 minutes at a time uh, would be a single tasker in your according to your definition i guess so i mm -hmm. believe so because i think there is some truth to it because mm -hmm. there is a, what is called the pomodoro technique in yeah. which you you concentrate on something for about 25 I think, 25 to 30 minutes and then you move on to a different task. You take a break and then you yeah, move on to a it's like different task. My brother uh, has just entered the university entrance exam, which uh, whose most recent name in Turkey is Yekaze. Yeah. And uh, he was you know, pretty successful. So thank God that was Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Good. We should talk um, yeah, about yeah, yeah. this. And uh, he used Pomodoro technique heavily, like for months, I guess. And at, at one point we were discussing and then uh, he asked me, like, what should I do for the last 10 days? Now is time to relax. I shouldn't go very heavy on this. And then I told him, like, just um, take two exams and that would be good. And it's 200 questions. And he told me, I have built resistance for 20 Pomodoros in succession. That's great. So it's crazy stuff. Like, it I is. was very surprised. 600 minutes of sustained attention is a lot of time. But because it's like every Pomodoro is 25 minutes and then, yeah. uh, you know, broken apart by five minute breaks. That's huge. That's great. That's a huge advantage. Exactly. It's a huge work capacity. So work capacity is actually another interesting, um, you know, side term to talk yeah. about when talking about multitasking. But still, definitely, like, uh, I agree with the kind of... Uh, characterization, the kind of framework you draw for you know what? multitasking. I'd like to thank you for giving me a great uh, piece of example to support my argument because like the Pomodoro technique and the success that your brother has uh -huh. built is a testament to the success and the, the capacity of the single tasking model. Yeah, I, I agree. Thank yeah, you. Exactly. Single tasking one, multitasking zero. I agree. But at the same time, it's like the second statement I have in my mind is neither single tasking nor multitasking is a modus operandi for a, 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 a lifetime. So that is true. nobody can be a single tasker or a multitasker all of the time. It's like you have to switch between them, I guess. That and, is true. And that kind of makes you a multitasker too, because true. you're sometimes, you know, find you sometimes find yourself having to deal with something for a longer period of time because it demands your attention for the duration of that entire time. You well, can't go ahead, you know. Do the anything. thing is, multitasking takes place even during the course of this conversation because exactly. I'm listening to you, but I'm not only listening to you, I'm also like staging my responses. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking of 
what to say next in response to a certain argument. So here, I mean, this might not be the case in a regular conversation, but mm -hmm. here, since we are arguing for and against certain points, I automatically have to think about what kind of responses I would produce. And right at this moment, part of my attention, so like human beings have certain attention limits, and part of my attention goes to listening to your Come, like listening to a response and part of it goes to prepping my own responses. Yeah. And by the way, you have just put the spotlight on another variable about how to define multitasking. You just said, you know, I'm, ta I, I'm also thinking about my response. So it's like you are switching between the tasks of listening and responding. Whereas multitasking to a lot of people in its more daily, more layman's terms, type of definition yeah. is like, uh, you know, maybe uh, messing with your phone and then looking at the screen, maybe listening to a person. It's like more social, socially defined tasks, whereas your tasks are more cognitively defined. That is so true. So it's another interesting nuance. It's a different dimension. And there is an interesting fact that I'd like to share with our listeners. You might be familiar with this or you might not be, but if you're not familiar, I think you'll find this very interesting. So like uh, for years, I thought computers were great multitaskers. Mm. I thought like computers, whoa, they can do like tens of different things at the same time mm. because like to the human eye, they are multitasking, right? You're, download manager is downloading a piece of software mm -hmm. uh, and your browser is loading up a web page and then your music player is uh, playing your favorite song or something all of these are happening at the same time and to me that was marvelous like mm -hmm. wow how can like a computer do all of these at the same time but then when i started reading and learning about computer architecture i learned that there is no such thing as multitasking in computers. And the fact of the matter is, normally a computer processor iterates between certain tasks, like given tasks or applications, mm -hmm. very fast. Maybe mm. in like, maybe, I don't know, like... A trillionth of a second yeah, or something. Yeah, maybe like. not that fast, but I'm not sure because I don't know the numbers, but mm -hmm. it's so fast that like you as a human don't notice it, mm -hmm. but you perceive the, it simultaneous. That is true. So the computer, in fact, like just rotates between tasks so fast that it gives the illusion of multitasking. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's one hundredth of a second or maybe one thousandth of a thousandth of a second. I don't know the exact number, uh -huh. but it's so fast that you get the illusion that it's a multitasking powerhouse, whereas it's not. That's a very interesting idea. And it kind of raises the question in my mind of, again, the definition. It's like if the computer is attending to different tasks and doing it so fast that it looks like it is doing all of them simultaneously, wouldn't that still be characterized in a more layman's terms kind of deal? Multitasking because since maybe one when we're talking about humans that's what we call multitasking because the other option is not a possibility for us we can't do things simultaneously so it's like anything that requires atten our attention for certain but shorter periods of time and when we attend to that we go ahead and do something else you know and switch between them quickly that's when multitasking happens yeah i mean you're right because to a certain degree since as I said, in the case of computers, the switch or switching between tasks happens so quickly that it gives the illusion of multitasking. Mm -hmm. And you might even argue that it's multitasking because it happens so fast that you don't notice it and it's almost flawless. Mm -hmm. So it's spotless, it's flawless. So you can argue, well, technically it's not multitasking, but uh, considering its results and the operation, you might think that it's a sort, it's a form of multitasking. But I think that level of multitasking is not really achievable by humans because I don't point. think we act so fast. For example, I'll give 
uh, an example from one of our one of our famous well not famous but favorite companies like Tesla so yeah. they've got uh, autopilot right so the Tesla autopilot system can do tens of different things at the same time it's not a human it's a computer system it's it's a piece of program software mm -hmm. so for example the system can drive the car and it can predict and thus respond to a uh, possible accident so mm -hmm. you've probably seen uh, video recordings of Tesla uh, breaking uh, automatically in order to avoid an accident exactly. and or things doing like a that. Maneuver and yeah. stuff like that. I mean in the case of humans we might not be able to act so fast because that system collects data from several sensors all around the uh, the car maybe mm -hmm. the video footage the sensors infrared sensors and everything and it calculates multiple data points simultaneously almost mm -hmm. simultaneously mm -hmm. spontaneously and then it can decide on a course of action uh, in a fraction of a second mm -hmm. but f for us humans like the mortals I think that kind of a performance is far from reach would you agree with that yeah I definitely agree I mean it's like that's the um, machine revolution I guess right the AI and everything that's going on there so it's like in terms of multitasking I guess it would be fair to say that robots and machines and computers they're definitely better than human beings at doing that yeah at the same time I think I would be very interested interested in talking about what different tasks and doing these different tasks uh, really means to us like in terms of how different they are it's like you might be, for example, a professional might have to just like I have. A, I have an interesting example okay. just occurred to me. Chess boxing. You might have heard of that. Kind of. Chess boxing is a very novel and very recent phenomenon, actually, in sports. So uh, two boxers, professional boxers, yeah, uh, they go go at each other inside the ring. Yeah. for a, a certain period of time around yeah. actually and then they sit down they there is you know a person comes in and then brings a chess uh you know it brings a you know a chess board really? and places it right in the middle of the ring and then those guys they sit down and then they play chess for a round that's very weird <laughs> exactly right and then they remove it and then they keep fighting so it's like the idea is the switch between boxing and playing chess is so great, the divide so large that it takes a lot of cognitive effort to be able to juggle these things. I would agree. Uh, so, and that's the test. Like a lot of sports, they test your concentration, your uh, work ethic, your discipline, your strength, powers, everything but they don't really test something like this i don't think so that is true so it's like that's the novel idea in that so it's like you know bringing those so it's a interesting example of multitasking I guess. it is and the question is but i'm not sure if it's multitasking because like since there is a break between two different tasks i wouldn't consider like like as a referee i would not consider that as multitasking mm, okay uh, okay there is definitely task switching mm -hmm. but i wouldn't consider that multitasking because when you start playing chess you sort of shut down the boxing mode hmm but how how quickly can you shut it down though i guess that's like because once you once start you... playing chess that's right but if you have been hit in the head for three times just the previous round yeah. then when you sit down to play chess you're not going to be very oriented i'm not sure like so i've, I've like, not been in that position exactly and so i don't want to be i guess that's the challenge right? yeah you know it's like there's a carryover effect sure and then you try to manage that effect and at the same time produce a performance that's like at least presentable that is true that. well i think uh we can go back to the normal everyday situations in which multitasking can help and can also uh, harm us so mm -hmm. i'd like to start out by giving some examples so i mean personally uh, i think focusing on a single task like concentrating on a single task produces much better results but there are of course times 
in which you have to manage multiple tasks uh, in a very limited period of time. Mm -hmm. So you juggle the tasks. So for example, but my, my observation is that multitasking works best when the tasks, the given tasks do not require a lot of mental effort. For mm -hmm. example, like while I'm wrapping a book, like a gift wrapping a book, uh, mm -hmm. I might also listen to a podcast. And in the meantime, I can just look around to see what's going on in the street. So mm. that's an example of multitasking. Since it doesn't require a lot of mental effort, say if I have a hundred uh, points of mental effort, maybe all of these tasks would require 80 points of mental effort mm. and I can concentrate on all of them or maybe I switch between those tasks very fast I don't notice it uh, for those kinds of tasks for for tasks that are not mentally taxing multitasking can work because and also for example in the case of wrapping a book like gift wrapping or maybe doing something manual so those tasks those tasks can over time turn into reflexes like exactly. just just as in the case of driving so for example most people although it's not uh, sort of recommended like most people can talk while they're driving right yeah I mean it's not recommended but most people can achieve that mm -hmm. it can be seen as an example of multitasking but there are a lot of studies showing that even though drivers claim they are very sort of aware of their surroundings when they talk while they're driving uh, they're not as vigilant as they should be. So mm -hmm. they lose a certain amount of attention during the process. So multitasking exactly. sort of reduces your awareness, mm -hmm. like environmental mm -hmm. awareness. Exactly. So in cases which are not critical, mm -hmm. uh, which are more sort of menial tasks, mm -hmm. I would say multitasking can help. For example, like answering the phone and taking notes and then shouting at your colleagues. So so that's a good case of multitasking. But if I am to write a very complex piece of code, or if I am to write a very thorough piece of uh, analysis on, I don't know, on um, on a certain topic in the linguistic literature, then I would have to really focus on the task, like mm -hmm. sort of isolate myself from the environment because it requires an enormous amount of concentration it requires an enormous amount of attention to bring different pieces together so in those cases i think multitasking is not uh, of great help because like so here is the question so if you are to for example right now you're working on developing some reading materials right mm -hmm. so would you be able to productively uh progress with that task of creating reading materials if you were to for example in the meantime answer phones and write emails in maybe 10 minute intervals would that you be, would be able to like concentrate and progress difficult. yeah that would be extremely difficult because definitely. it would interrupt your line of thinking and you would have to go back sort of warm up again and then remember everything and then uh, start again that's right so, which brings me to another statement in my mind those one of those sentences uh, your choice between multitasking and single tasking is dependent upon the task at hand that is true so that's a very I, I would agree with that so I think um, you know multitasking uh, in its nature it is not something that you can use all the time so as you just said uh, things that are not so heavy on your attention span might be combined together and then you can switch between them back and forth and that would be multitasking but if there's something that you want to achieve that is like a maybe a larger goal and uh, most of the time it is because you know there's a correlation between how much attention you give something and how valuable it is most of the time yeah not not always you know we're not living in an ideal world but at the same time yeah so uh, there's definitely a benefit to, to be had in uh, focusing and just like with unrelentless you know completely relentless uh, dedication to something so, and you know it kind of um, makes me think that we can also uh, take a minute to talk about attention itself right because yeah you know, you only have a limited amount of that. That is true. And I think this is an important determining factor in terms of how you want to go about doing something. 
whether you're going to allow, uh, whether you're going to brook any um, external interventions in your attention, your concentration, which would signify multitasking. Because yeah. if you allow something to come in, a, a basic example would be us turning off our phones. Mine on airplane mode, your, yours on do not disturb, do not disturb mode. mode. Because we know that we don't want any phones ringing or vibrating around here. Yeah. And now we're concentrating on doing this, you know. Yeah. There are technical sides to this too. Sure. You know, we don't want to be you know, disturbed because it's an audio recording and this is the is entirety of the product that we're going to publish online. Yeah. But at the same time, we don't want to be disturbed ourselves either. Because if we get disturbed, then there's no point in having a smooth audio recording. That is true. It's like we are isolating ourselves from exactly. the external environment and we're focusing, we're concentrating on the conversation, on the test. So mm -hmm. I think we're a hundred percent here and we're a hundred percent in the task of producing this mm -hmm. recording. Exactly. It's almost like just completely like focusing on but it's almost like pressure i guess physical pressure, pressure. it's like be. you're just digging and digging and digging and you're putting pressure on the same target points yeah you can say and that. it allows you to keep digging but if you kind of dig from the outside on the perimeter of the area and then you're gonna like maybe get a creator type of thing like a large yeah. opening or something but you're not gonna go very deep that is true so I've got a different point to make with regards to attention and multitasking. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the problems in our era. So these days people are so used to doing a number of things at the same time. Yeah. Multitasking. Mm -hmm. So for example, we're on our phones, maybe we're talking to our loved ones, we're in our maybe living room, like having tea or something. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking to our loved ones, our family, friends and so on. But at the same time, we're busy with our phones or maybe we're thinking about something else. So we're multitasking. And I think in those cases, we don't fully experience the moment. So there are a lot of tech investors or tech founders who uh, consciously turn off their phones and stay away from technology for a couple of days during weekends or they take uh, like tech off days or vacations because when you do that when you are consciously experiencing the moment I think you build stronger connections because for example like imagine this you're talking to your spouse or something um, if full attention is present i think the cons the conversation will be much more uh like much more smoother uh the conversation will be much more delightful and engaging and, and engaging and more maybe more passionate but if you are like half-heartedly listening to the conversation and thinking about something else at the same time it would not be uh, as fulfilling so that's another thing uh, to consider when it comes to multitasking because uh, I think these days social relations are hampered by our efforts uh, to multitask and we should really make sure that sometimes we take maybe hours off from our uh, from our devices from tech from other external uh, disturbances to focus on the moment to really think about our being think about our relationships and it's I think it has been very popular especially in tech circles to focus on meditation mm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that but I have seen exactly a lot of that. like Silicon Valley type of people they really uh, they really emphasize the importance of meditation. So they're big on that. Yeah. yeah, they're big on that. It's it's not about multitasking. You would expect those people to talk about multitasking, but it's not that. They think about meditation. They talk about meditation, and really uh, shutting them shutting down their mind to external disturbances and uh, feeling themselves in their entirety. So that's a very different experience, mm -hmm. and I think it's an experience that most of us do not uh, encounter a lot in our day-to-day -day life because we're not focused on it and since you're, we're not focused on it the life will not throw it at us because mm -hmm. it's 
it's something that we should earn. It's something that we should consciously create. Exactly. I mean, there, there, that was a great uh, sociological slash psychological uh, depth to our uh, conversation. And I think we need that because I believe that the um, starting point of this discussion, which you mentioned as being uh, a, a, a viewer comment, I guess, I think it stemmed from the, the need for that person to uh, understand which strategy would be better for their personal lives, for their professional lives. So they were looking for an answer and they thought that you were a great professional, like you, they saw your videos or something. And then, they, you know, they're, if they're a viewer, then they automatically <laughs> saw your videos. But the idea is they think that when you see somebody productive, you assume that they have built great habits. In and fact, I think that's, that's the, the opposite. Idea. Well, it's that is true. The habit part is true. But I think most people think that to achieve success, you have to multitask. Mm. Whereas exactly. it's not exactly, it's not necessarily true. I, I think I, I want to really make a point here uh, because just as you've made a, um, a sociological, you know, contribution to this, I would like to take a, maybe half a step back and look at it from a different perspective. Um, you know, there's, we see duality, examples of duality in everything that we see around us. You know, not everything, but a lot of things. One particular dichotomy I want to talk about here is background versus foreground. That is like, true. There is always a subject and there's always a background. You can see that in the world. You can see that in photography, for example. You can see that in a lot of things. There are working parts. There are stable you know stationary parts you know there's a building you know it has windows that you can open doors and stuff and then you know move elevators moving up and down yeah. and then there's this concrete structure that cannot be moved and it should not be moved because if it does then you don't have a building anymore so there's always a foreground and there's always a background and i think in terms of multitasking people should not be fooled into thinking that there will always be foreground we shouldn't, I think there's a huge delusion going on about multitasking. And this is coming from somebody who worked as a journalist for like five years and then who had to read and edit and publish three to five hundred word, uh, you know, stories that took maybe like less than five minutes to read, maybe up to 10 minutes. And I was constantly multitasking. I was constantly doing and the, the worst parts of multitasking too, like worst examples of yeah. multitasking. And I believe that we should not be uh, deceived about multitasking. Just as you said, you know, there are people around us that seem to emphasize that multitasking is key to success, whereas this is really not true. We know that, you know, constant dedicated attention is a better path towards success, a much better path at times. And we've explained the reason why, because we said that, for example, if something requires a lot of attention and if you know it really needs your all of your processing power to be present then you can't be going around doing other things while doing that so that's the point so um, the illusion about multitasking is you really the illusion itself is that you can multitask because you really can't multitask just as you you know talked about computers the computers you know, anything applicable to computers, I don't think we as human beings are impervious to it. Like we're all the same being at the, you know, we, we're all together in this. Like yeah. it could be made of a different material, but still human beings, human minds, computer, you know, systems, they're all similar, you know, similar, extremely similar. So we can't really multitask. I mean, at any particular moment in time and space we are somewhere and we are at a certain time so it's like we can't be focusing on two things at the same time we might enlarge our area of focus or we might narrow it down but the end result is there's always singular focus and singular attention that is true. So you can't really multitask. All you can do is switch between different tasks so fast that it looks like multitask. It looks simultaneous, but it isn't. Yeah. So you can't, you shouldn't be like tearing your hair about your multitasking because you're really not doing it. 
Well, I guess I'll share a great piece of information with our listeners. There is a better method to get your list or to-do mm. list done. Here's the well, key. I would. I was about to use a very slang word, but I kind of avoided it. So there is a better method to achieve your goals in life or complete your daily tasks in life. And it's called, I think we've talked about this before with Jamberg, but not on the podcast. So it's called batch processing. Mm -hmm. So the idea in batch processing is that you sort of collect your tasks that are of a similar nature together Mm -hmm. into buckets and you do each type of task uh, one after another. So instead of switching between very different tasks, you complete very similar tasks at the same time. For example, imagine this, you are, you talked about like editing new stories. Mm -hmm. So instead of if there are, maybe there are three parts to the process, like write an email to the author Mm -hmm. and then download the document and then edit it and then send it back to the author. So instead of doing all the steps separate, like for each individual, instead of like doing it for a single author, Mm -hmm. you can email all the authors at the same time and then you can download all the articles once Mm -hmm. they write you back. Mm -hmm. And then you start editing uh, all the documents at the same time in a row. And then once they're finished, you can send all the documents at the same time or one after another. So in this case, you are basically batching a similar processes together. Exactly. You're doing one thing after another, but they are similar in nature, in, in structure. So this helps you uh, progress much faster and mm-hmm. get more things done because you don't have to switch between very different tasks because exactly. when you have to switch between very different tasks, you lose a lot of mental uh, energy because mm. switching between certain tasks requires reorientation, remembering your last state of mind. So it might be very mental or taxing, but in batch processing, you can get a lot more done uh, with less effort and with more productivity. So I think. If you came for multitasking, you should leave with batch processing and Mm -hmm. to especially to that one uh, viewer who wanted to learn more about multitasking, I can say that you should definitely learn more about batch processing because it's a much uh, superior, much more superior method and I think it can help a lot more in your life. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, personally, I would like to end with one last sentence in my head as i just you know as i said before and i think it would be uh we're when we're talking about multitasking versus single tasking we're also dealing with realities versus uh, idealism or something sure like that you know because um you know in an ideal world as they say in an ideal world we all would be single tasking as much as possible like maybe the all of the time but unfortunately the world in its current state um kind of forces us i guess that is true to multitask all of us even though we may not know what we're doing we're still being sucked into this you know delusional idea that we can do multiple things at once i think um you know given this reality I would suggest um, that we try to find ways of opening up space for ourselves. It doesn't have to be kind of a space where you're isolated from the society or you're from your family and friends. It could just be like 10 to 15 minutes of undivided attention to something that you care about, something that you cherish, something that gives you the energy to really live the rest of your day, maybe like 23 hours and 45 minutes, fulfillingly. So I think that could be really helpful for all of us to practice more single tasking. And I mean, it might even you know, have a larger impact on our longer term strategies. Sure. 
I mean, I think that's a good point to make because if you're not deliberate about your life, if mm. you're not deliberate about your day, if you're not deliberate about your actions, then you will simply be guided by the life itself. But you're a human, you have potential, you have willpower, and you have the power to change things, at least in your life, in your personal universe. So mm. you have to be deliberate and you have to make sure that you are more aware of your actions and you are more uh, in in harmony with the environment when it comes to your relations, when it comes to your conversations or when it comes to your daily or uh, yearly actions. So that's my take. Well, that was great. And I think that's it. Yeah. You know, that was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. And I kind of realized that I have I miss, you know, doing these. It's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty enjoyable. It and is. It's great when it's consistent too, but it's like there are certain things that you can't really control. That is true. Well, we I were mean, away from the place. So. That is true. So we had a break. We had a holiday. Exactly. Uh, and then I had to deal with a lot of students who failed <laughs> their um, prep classes. <laughs> that takes a lot of mental effort. Exactly. So, but we're back and yep. it's it's great to be back. And yep. I'm hoping that we will continue to publish regularly. Mm-hmm. If not regularly, we will make sure to publish at least once or twice a month. Or, or we're going to try to batch process for you guys a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> well, honestly, it's, it's the name of the game. So my plan is to sort of record maybe 10 episodes in a single day or in a two or three day period, get them ready and publish them over uh, a period of months or weeks so that you guys are never deprived of material so i'll do what i preach i'll be batch mm. processing <laughs> see that cool. matters you yeah, have to does. do what you preach it does yeah okay All right so that's it. that's it yeah that's it see All you right. in the next episode bye